hurries to join the army, and his mother attempts to discourage him, claiming that his grandfather was killed in battle and has never been heard from again. He gets into one of the vehicles with the others. A group of Algerians has joined him, including Mesoud, who wants to marry and live in France, and Corporal Abdelkader, who wants indigenous people in his country to be treated on an equal footing with settlers in order to achieve equality with them. His mother drops her shoulders, dreading the worst. The Algerians are on their way to Morocco to start their basic training, during which a French colonel makes a stirring speech about fighting for France's dignity and independence. Following the statement by the French colonel, Yasser and his younger brother Lerbi have already expressed remorse about their decision to enlist in the army for the money, while at the same time, Lerbi hopes to be able to afford to marry a lady after the war. A peak of Abdelkader, the fourth prominent North African, as he prepares for his corporal tests was also revealed. On the other hand, the French soldiers arrived in Italy in 1944 as the second company of the 7th Algerian Infantry Regiment, which was headed by the two freshly promoted corporals, Abdelkader, a North African, and Leroux, a Frenchman. They are introduced to Sergeant Martinez, their new immediate commanding officer, a schizophrenic figure who constantly berates his subordinates while promoting their problems to Captain Duru, his commanding officer in charge. Martinez soon sees a French soldier, Mesoud Sunni, as a skilled marksman during their training and assigns him the role of the company's marksman as a result. Martinez attaches a grenade to Saeed's tunic as part of a training exercise. The pin is knocked out by Saeed's carelessness, causing Martinez to fling it away and the rest of the group to flee for shelter. He then rifle butts head and knocked down Corporal Abdelkader, who is attempting to defend Saeed's rights. Martinez informs the corporals later that evening that they would be conducting an offensive up a hill the next day in order to flush out the Germans. The guys had a conversation at night. They are dissatisfied with Martinez's treatment of said, but an elder player believes Martinez is a nice guy. The next day, they make their way up the hill under savage assault from both the Germans and their own artillery. At one point, they are pinned down by a machine gun nest, but said notices Martinez looking at him and pulls out a grenade to kill the Germans. After then, said is wrestling with a German who has jumped on top of him. Martinez fires a shot at the German and then turns to face said before continuing on. Additionally, Yasir and his brother Lerbi robbed the corpses of their private possessions. In spite of the high number of losses, the French colonel is overjoyed with success, proclaiming it to be the first French triumph against the Germans since 1940 and commanding the company's reporter to write that France had restored its honor and the confidence of the Allies. Troops from the French army returned to their base camp, including the dead and wounded soldiers, the next day, soldiers are preparing to load equipment aboard a ship. Said rushes to Martinez to express his gratitude for saving his life, and Martinez appoints him as his sidekick to replace Ali, who was slain during the battle. After being rejected one of the fresh tomatoes because they were not for them, the North Africans had their first contact with racism in the French army while at the food hall. Martinez tells him to go on in the line, but Corporal Abdelkader grabs a carton of tomatoes and begins stomping on them with his feet, claiming that if the North African soldier can't have it, no one can. Martinez is enraged as the rest of the group joins in the scream. On the other hand, Martinez instructs Captain Duru, when the captain inquires about how he should handle the indigenous or Muslims involved, to refer to them as men. To the satisfaction of the North Africans, the new rules guaranteed everyone accesses to fresh tomatoes. The colonel declares over the ship's tannoy system that they are all returning home, that is, to France, to resounding applause from the whole crew and enthusiastic singing of the Marseillaise by the team. Provence during August 1944. They are hailed as saviors as soon as they return to the town. Messoud comes into a French girl named Irene on the street, and she invites him to stay with her. Messoud is taken aback by the silky bedding in her chamber and is first wary of her since, given where he's come from. His people don't generally go out with French ladies, as he explains later. She encourages him, and the two of them spend the night together, falling in love with each other. Meanwhile, Yasir and his brother Lerbi use their loot to start a black market business. The following day, they happen to stumble inside a church. Lerbi takes pleasure in robbing the collection box. In order to show respect for their suffering god, Yasir tells him to return the item. He agrees, 
But Yasser is reminded that when he was a child, the French murdered his family as part of the pacification policy. Additionally, the following day, Messao departs from Irene to rejoin his troops, and they both make a steadfast pledge to write to and wait for one another. By now, in Rhone Valley. During the march in October 1944, Messaud is telling his fellow soldiers about his desire to settle in Marseille and marry Irene. He has been nagging the post office for his mail, but none has been delivered to him. Set is ordered to find a clean shirt for Martinez and notices a photograph of Martinez's mother, who looks just like his own mother. Martinez is pleased. Martinez is in the plaza having a spat with mainland French soldiers who are supposed to depart in Paris, but not the North African soldiers who are due to leave in Paris. Said speaks to Martinez about how much they both miss their families back home, but Martinez is perplexed as to why he is talking to him in Arabic in the first place. On the other hand, the colonel gave yet another inspiring speech before the strike in the woods in the Vosges Mountains in November 1944. Once again, there were several casualties. Corporal Abdelkader reports the seizure of the position, but Martinez chastises him for not following orders. Messaoud sends yet again another letter to express his dissatisfaction, but this time the French army post censor reviews the message before suppressing it. Martinez expresses his dismay to Captain Duru about the lack of leave and promotions available to Africans. Yasser and Lerby remove the belongings of fallen troops, despite the frigid circumstances in which they are now operating. Africans are invited to the desert by leaflets that are fired into French lines. Martinez raises concerns about Corporal Abdelkader's loyalties, which Abdelkader categorically denies. The news is out, the North Africans have been ordered to leave. However, they become a little more skeptical when they are dressed in army boots and jackets. They have also been promised to see dancers for that evening. Captain Duru tells Martinez that he has been promoted to Staff Sergeant, and Corporal LaRue has been promoted to Sergeant, which Abdelkader overhears. Martinez asks Said to join him for a celebratory drink and cigar that evening. Said expresses his delight that Martinez resembles him in appearance, that is, that he is an Arab, and speaks about the photograph. Martinez is furious with him and instructs him not to mention it to anybody else before throwing him out of the house. The promised dancers turn out to be full-length ballet instead. The colonel is amused, but the majority of the audience leaves. Messaud has announced that he will be taking some time off in Marseille. The North African soldiers have become disillusioned and have rallied behind Corporal Abdelkader's appeal for equal treatment with the French army. Martinez steps in, and he and Abdelkader stand and fight. Abdelkader has been charged with a crime. Messaud has been apprehended by military police and is being held in the same detention facility. He is frantic about visiting Irene as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Irene is attempting to find out if Messaud is still alive by contacting the army since it has come to her attention that she has also sent a large number of letters to no avail. The clerk pledges to inform her of the situation. Martinez is asked by the colonel what he intends to do with the Africans. He pays attention to Martinez, who claims that Africans are faithful. Corporal Abdelkader is spared a court-martial and instead is allowed to travel on a risky mission in Alsace where he will provide new supplies and ammunition to the 37th U.S. American forces, who had burst through German lines but are now fighting to maintain a crucial bridgehead ahead of an imminent French onslaught in the area. According to him, if the Algerians followed his instructions, they would be hailed as heroes in France, and Abdelkader believed him. According to Captain Duru, the colonel is as good as his word, and he draws Corporal Abdelkader away. Messaud is the company's most outstanding marksman, and Abdelkader convinces the captain that he should be released for this operation. Alsace, France, January 1945. As they make their way through dense woodland, Captain Duru accidentally sets off a series of German explosive devices, killing himself and Corporal Leroux as well as five other members of their squad, leaving just Corporal Abdelkader, Messaud, Yasser, Said, and the critically injured Martinez alive. Lerby, Yasser's brother, is among the dead, and in his sorrow, Yasser leads the appeal for the survivors to return home. Martinez is injured, and Corporal Abdelkader is left to make decisions and provide effective leadership. Abdelkader browbeats the soldiers into maintaining the bridgehead so that Algerians will be recognized as the first French forces to reach Alsace. 
Martinez said that's the choice he would have made if it had been the first time he had stood at his corporal's side. After a challenging hike, they arrive at the bridgehead, only to find it desolate and full of dead troops. The few remaining natives emerge and inquire as to the whereabouts of the remaining French. The townspeople feed the guys, Martinez, who has been gravely injured, is given a bed, but a distraught said tells Martinez that he wishes he had died. Early the following day, a German advance patrol arrives. The four soldiers successfully resist the Germans, but a German soldier armed with a bazooka joins the next wave of attackers. Every one of them but Abdelkader is dead, but he hears French shouts and sees the French main body come to destroy the Germans just as they are about to encircle him. French troops and locals posing for a freedom portrait greet Abdelkader as they go down the street. Abdelkader is devastated. In the eyes of several of the locals, Abdelkader is the actual hero. In his vehicle, he sees the colonel, who is urging his soldiers to continue. There is nothing he can do about it. A passing soldier notices that Abdelkader is without a unit and quickly enrolls him in the French battalion whose corporal has been slain. The colonel continues on his way without a care in the world. In Alsace, France, the film finishes. An old Abdelkader sorrowfully visits the graves of his companions, whose tombs bear no record of their heroism. Abdelkader returns to his modest bedsit in Alsace.